with the Chinese. And turn right. A justice agenda forward, forward so we have a political action team that are working to get justice in Monterey County. Monterey County seems to think that there's no problem and they don't want to budge. But we want you to know that black people are having problems in Monterey County. And we need people to stand with us in Monterey County. And we need people to go to the courthouses. And we need people to be able to show up in the city council meetings. We need people to be able to show up. If Black Lives Matter people, we want you to show up. We really need you to show up. So we need you to fill out these papers. Those that have not filled them out, I want to say, come on down, right on over here. Get you a form, fill it out, sign the back. Because we're going to put you to work in Monterey County. We're not just protesting. We're not, we're not just marching. We're going to put you to work in Monterey County so we can let these people know that Black Lives Matter is right here. Black Lives Matter is here. Right here. So, uh, Carson, I'm getting ready to have Carson. Everything is ready. So, Carson, Carson is, is a black life in Monterey County. That not Right here in the Seaside. Seaside wants you to believe that nothing is going on in Seaside. They want to hide and cover stuff up. And what we want to do is expose what they've been covering up and hiding and what they've been pretending about. Because the people that are hurting, voices have been suppressed. And they don't have a voice and they don't even want to talk because they don't want no retaliation. A lot of people don't want retaliation from the police and from different people. So let me hear somebody, let me, let me hear you guys support me with this. Defund the police! Defund the police! Defund the police! Defund the police! I can't hear you! Defund the police! 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 And stop pretending, okay? We just want to be treated like human beings and treated like anybody else and be fair. Okay, here's a uh, call to Let it resound loud as the roll. 
will see and sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the day. When hope unborn had died, yet with the steady feet have not our weary feet come to the place for which our Father sighed. With tears has been watered. We have come treading the path through the blood of the slaughtered. Out of the gloom we passed, still now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, felt in the days when he brought us on the way. Thou who has by thy into the light keep us forever in the path we pray the lest our feet stray from the places of God where we met thee lest our hearts Drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. True to our God, true to our name. Because we need you to go with us to the courthouse. We need you to go with us to the city hall, like I said before. We need you to show up. We, we need you to show up and stand up for our rights because it's not so easily, easily to come for us. We have a lot of, you know, uh, we have a, uh, uh, somebody on, on the team has researched and found out that um, um, Sand City, Sand City last year arrested now there's 300 people that live in Sand City, just so you know. Last year, Sand City police, over 400 in Sand City? So over 400 in Sand City now. But the number is still great. Last year, Sand City has arrested over 500 people last year alone. Petty stuff, little petty stuff, okay? And most of them lives, guess who those lives are? Black lives. Black lives and brown lives. Okay? 
So we're going to tell the police, stop this. We're not taking this no more. Enough is enough. And we're tired of being tired. Matter of fact, we're sick and tired of being tired. Stop picking on our young men. My, uh, one, uh, this is the uh, book club that's, that's putting this on because I have a group of young people in the community I've been doing over 20 years working with them. And these young people uh, come to the club, come to the book club, help me work with them with reading and stuff. But I, I, I did this to redirect young people's lives and give them something else to do as an input. So one of my uh, uh, children in the book club was just telling uh, our group earlier this week that they had a problem. I'm not going to have the child come and tell it, but I'm going to have one of the uh, group members. Will you come and talk about it? Ken or, or Gabby? I'm going to have one of them come and talk about, you want to talk about it? Talk about what happened. And so we're investigating these things. We're making sure these things don't keep, uh, keep happening. Yeah, all right. So we are in the process of uh, reaching out to the community and gathering stories, um, especially of young people, especially of people of color, especially black young people who have uh, had way too many experiences with the police here in Seaside. Uh, there is a misconception that there is no racial profiling going on in our area, that we are different than places like Minneapolis. Uh, but I was talking to a young teen this week who um, has been stopped and questioned by the police over 25 times. He's only 16. First time when he was 12. Most of the time he was selling candy for the book club. Sometimes he was passing out flyers. Uh, he's been accused of ship shoplifting at stores that he wasn't even inside of. Um, this is just one story of one uh, black teen here in Seaside. So we definitely have a problem and we're going to expose all of the inner workings of um, policing here in our community and we're going to break it down. So thank you. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you. So, and that young teen was just walking past Target in San City. Okay? Can you imagine? Walking past? And he's just a description of somebody stealing. But that's all of us black people, by the way. Okay? Just so you know, okay, because if it doesn't happen to you, it happens to us all the time. Um, I'm going to have Tay, uh, give it up for Tay, a black uh, life that matters, coming before you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Miriam. I love to address, address the community about changes. We need changes. So, I'm actually kind of like a, a deep revolutionary poet, so I'm going to take my time and say this so that it can be absorbed. I hope that everyone pays attention. So, for a long time, I thought the purpose of life was for us to find ourselves in this giant world, going through the motions of school, work, family, and all the rules that society has set for us to meet these unrealistic standards. Also, I thought that the purpose of life was to pursue happiness in this world. But after spending majority of my life looking for myself in the world through education, friendships, and relationships, I was led to find myself alone in a real dark place. The way that I realized that I was inside of myself was when I became satisfied with just being alive. For black people, we're just satisfied to stay alive. I didn't want anything else but just to keep living so that I can love others and to just further my life experience. And that only meant one thing, and that is I am what I am without a body. And my body is just an accumulation of everything that I eat, drink, see, touch, and hear. But who I am is the life inside of the body that I have accumulated. We're not just our color. Our bodies are our tools of expression and perception. But I kept asking myself, what is the life source or the thing that I was before I became who my mama gave birth to? Because I know whoever that is, is who I am now and also who I will be infinitely even without this body. And obviously I would highly consider that is the same case for everyone. But what does that mean? 
It means that we are all one. We are all born free to be just whatever we choose to be, whenever we choose to be it. Only within the laws of nature, not the laws of man. And that is our life's purpose. The body is what our ancestors had enslaved. The infinite life source inside of us is God. Our ancestors dedicated their own lives as service to God, but their minds were always free. They knew they had choices, yet they were alchemists making the best out of the worst for future generations. They consciously made a decision to live a life of purpose, even being physically enslaved. That's the trick that society has played on us, to make us believe our bodies are free through emancipation, but it's our minds that they have enslaved. They have enslaved us to believe the lies of a conveyor belt lifestyle. The way human beings move along through society from life to death goes on a linear design, straight in and straight out. We are born in hospitals. Doctors cut off our children's umbilical cords. We are forced immunizations, put through a mandatory programming school system television and unavoidable media and technologies. We're served processed foods. We have underpaid and overworked jobs. We have a healthcare system that kills more than it heals. And all of these disastrous poisons didn't exist when our ancestors were building pyramids over hundreds of years at a time. Our bodies are only temporary and therefore we should use them for a life of purpose and not a life of mental or physical servitude. But we must take back our minds. How can we do that? First we can start by loving ourselves enough to know what our value is. Here are a few questions to help us determine our value. What content are we feeding our minds and bodies? How do we treat others and ourselves? Our value determines our worth. We have the power to increase or decrease our own value by investing our time and energy into our emotional and into our emotional state and our talents. Our worth is determined by the quality and value of our talents that we have to offer and share with others. All talents are necessary to this world or they would not exist. There's someone who needs what you have to offer. We all have multiple talents. However, some talents hold more value and more worth than others. I suggest you invest majority of your energy into those talents that give you the most joy and a sense of accomplishment and you will definitely be living in your life of purpose. Your mind will be free and your spirit will be in infinite peace. Okay, so here's my poem. Time in the heart and time in the mind are wavelengths of a different kind. One is linear, that's in the, that's in the mind. One is spiral, that's in the heart. So listen closely so love can go viral. In the mind, boundaries are established by the ego. Imaginary limitations or fears reminding us of how far we can go. Causing us to robotically react instead of appropriately respond. But the mind is actually how all females start. The female chromosome. How all humans start, excuse me. The female chromosome. All humans start as a female. <laughs> Which, in honestly, in my opinion, is beautiful. However, we are fragile and extremely vulnerable. The heart is feminine energy. It's selfishly selfish. And the mind is strong and analytical, yet easily distracted. The mind is masculine energy. <laughs> The heart has created a visual form of itself into reality. 
Although it cannot be seen by you, while it pumps life into you, you can feel it and hear it and monitor its existence and importance to your life source. The heart is God, inside of life. Allow your heart to lead and your mind to protect and let your ego be your present personality and not your dictator. <laughs> Metamorphosis means a change in form or nature of a thing or person into something completely different by natural or supernatural means. To metamorphosize is to realize that who we are now must die inside. The mind of a caterpillar has no concept to the abilities of a butterfly. Even though it's not easy to let go of all you have learned to love and know, the potentials of life's perception and, re and reflection can inspire us to grow. Please do not be afraid of the beauty of transformation that is to come. Let's learn to be more loving, kind, and supportive to each other because we are all one. Together we are the complete cosmos of life in its infinite and ultimate form. So let's be understanding and considerate of each other because there is no such thing as norm. We are in a constant cycle of evolution. Learning how to flow with growth is the only comforting solution. We are a collection of nature's own elements. We have the power of life. Even though we have lived life walking on the ground, we are evolving so that we can fly. In order for us to conceptualize the magnitude of that which is to be, we need to be balanced and present in each phase of growth that reveals the infinity. This is the power of creation. It's where the chemicals have no expression. As alchemists, we can establish the boundaries and turn everything into a blessing. God is all that is, and that is all life is. That's why I love you all, gods and goddesses. Thank you. Stop, stop, stop. Can we show her some more love, please? That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Hey, as y'all can see, we are the last flock. We are the last flock. You see, as 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 time go by with these protests and stuff, the crowd starts off really, really big, but then after after a while, you know, people speak it. You know, people speak it tired. They don't want to walk no more. They don't want to preach no more. Everybody gets tired of everybody gets tired of yelling the same stuff, right? Well, this is this is the revolution. Yeah! This is how it happens. When you tired, when you don't want to do nothing, this is what struggling is all about. We are all struggling together. So if we all struggling together, we have to continue to make noise. We have to continue to move in the right direction. Y'all feel me? Can we get it? Can we get it? Can we get it going real quick? No justice. No peace. 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 Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. We gotta get a little louder. They ain't hearing us, man. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. There we go. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Y'all feel me? Can we can we get it going? Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Yeah. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. One more time. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Now listen. A revolution only happens and it only works for those who participate in it. For everybody, a revolution is not going to happen for everybody. A lot of people is not going to seek justice, but for the ones who are here, for the ones who, who, who really want to see change, these are the people that y'all need to talk to. Everybody out here, everybody could have been doing something different. But no, we all took the time today to come out here because we said Black Lives Matter. So since Black Lives Matter, we're going to be out here shouting. Y'all feel me? Okay, then. I got a poem off the top of my head. I gotta, I gotta get it going. Yeah, yeah. This one called the rise. 
the rise, and it, it's perfect for the crowd. <laughs> oh, wait, we got people coming across the street. Let them know they could be a part of this, too. Yeah! Yeah! Listen, 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 listen. You strive for great, then keep your head up. We've been marching for years, but mama, please don't let her. There's a war outside, but mama say that days are getting better. When you rise, I live. Your smile is the reason why we all choose to give. So lift me up. If you a brother to me, then lift me up. True, the decisions are how we live. We wasn't giving much. But we take it out on each other. Blue, white, and red bullets flying, we duck. Is this the cycle we choose to raise a son? No more walkouts. Mama's stuck raising us while Pops is locked out. Or choose to raise another, so now Daddy walk out. Now the vision cut short. I want to rise for more, but can't seem to find the door. My stomach hurting, it's getting hard to ignore. Got me going crazy, it's poor robbing poor. But still, Mama say that days are getting better. So raise your chin up, little nigga. Want to be the man and teach these gangs how to lead by example. If I'm an animal, then I'm a grind until I hurt. And I'm going to become my own boss instead of enslavement that defines us all as poor. Drugs ain't the solution, and freedom ain't guaranteeing this constitution. There's a war outside, my people losing. Not no black on black or black on white. When you loyal to a gang, you hold on tight. Imagine a world with no more killings, that's a bright light. But instead, we'd rather settle than to strive. Mama say, it's cold outside, baby. You a lie. You put more trust in me, and just for once, I'd rather live than to die. Because nightmares are growing thicker. Dreams are getting bigger. While she hurting in silence, we laughing while no one hear her. Pussy be the greatest when she remind you that it's yours. Want you to give her everything. You want sex, but she want more. She acting out with her friends. It's getting hard for you to ignore. Want to break the chain, but it's hard to say that she don't love you no more. Because you stuck in your ways. While there's a war outside, you losing hope for better days. Want to be the chains, but the role models you listen to all sound the same. Help me change the picture. I ain't no better than the next man. Victim to my ignorance, how you expect me to change the next man? Segregated shit we be, I'd rather take my own life just to help the next man. Cause all my heroes either dead or in jail. You talk about heaven, but bro, bro, we living in hell. The question ain't what it's like to be a black male, but rather how to escape the system. When they want you either dead or in jail. Knowledge. Yeah! <laughs> Basically, what I want y'all to be accountable for is our actions. Our actions. You, listen, you being here today makes a difference. Don't waste any more time. Yes, we get it, we're marching, but what else? If you're not studying, if you're not reading a book, if you're not writing a book, this is history. We're making history right now. Hey, our kids, our kids in the future, they're going to be talking like, Dad, wait, y'all did what? They did what? COVID-19, what? And we got to be able to, we got to be able to teach them. Because we talk about the last generation, oh yeah, the last generation, they didn't do a good job raising us, and now we got, you know, more black on black crime. This is the time where we make the difference. Yeah. Yeah. This is the perfect time for us to come out and make a difference, y'all. For real. So it starts with that. Um, another thing that we need to start pushing is libraries. We need libraries in our homes. For real. Don't listen. Don't wait until you go back to school to be like, oh, well, yeah, I kind of learned a little bit. And no, stop waiting for a teacher to go and teach you some shit that you can learn yourself. For real, I'm in college. I'm in college teaching, teaching professors my story. Because I have to. It's not just it's not just me and it's not just cool for for us to chill out and be cool because you know we got a free lunch and shit. It's not that cool. Cause when we come back out here, we see what's really going on. We back in hell. So if you don't put nothing into it, don't be mad when shit just blow up. That's real. Thank y'all. Reyes, Reyes, where are you at? Got you, got you, got you. My brother's about to come and drop some knowledge for y'all. Give him a round of applause, please. Okay, so I'm gonna do this in Spanish, because I know Spanish more, and my English is cut, so me am going to do Primeramente, quiero dar las gracias al creador por otro día de vida. 
y a todos los que están aquí, everybody for showing up, thank you for showing up. Uh, conocí a la tía Smith on the first march on, on Salinas a couple of weeks ago, and I invited, I invited her to my march. I had a march yesterday in Morgan Hill, and it was really big, and I was like, wow! Pero pues, como dice el muchacho aquí, we had to make history, tenemos que marcar historia. Last night, that march, it was the biggest march ever being marked out on Morgan Hill. So esa marcha se va a escribir en libros de Morgan Hill. We walk and we march and we dance and we scream and we yell y lloramos y gritamos and we walk and we march por todos los niños que han sido separados de sus familias, todas las familias que han sido separadas por el, el sistema de ICE, detention center, todos ellos. We walked and nos escucharon. Y cuando terminamos, everybody got in their Facebook and we saw what the news today, everybody was saying that families were going to be released from the yes. ice centers because of COVID-19. So, imagine, everybody at the march started crying, gritaron, todos chingón. It was just like, a, it was just like capturing that momentum time that if you guys don't go out and don't speak out, y no canta, y no llora, y no danza, no se va a hacer nada. A huevo, ¿verdad? Sí, so, yo estoy aquí nomás para anunciar todo esto en español porque es not, not just George Floyd, ni Rihanna Taylor, ni Vanessa Guillén, ni los niños encerrados, es todos. This is the time for everybody to be united. Put your differences on the side, step up, speak up, danzar y bailar. So, eso es todo. I don't have nothing else to say besides this is really beautiful. Smith, yes, Smith. Um, this is really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And um, I was really touched with everybody yesterday and I'm really touched with everybody here. And let's keep going, keep it strong, keep it together. La revolución no se va a televisar, so tenemos que salir y a gritar. Olivia was one of, was one of my, my inspirations to speak out. Su comandante Marcos from Oaxaca, Ch from Chiapas, Mexico. Para todos la luz, para todos, todos. Thank you. So one thing that's got very important I want to say. We've been, uh, we, we, uh, we've been, I have nine kids, okay? Nine kids. They're all grown. They're all grown. And guess what I make sure they do every year? Or every election is I make sure they vote. So our votes count, right? But you know, now I have 16 grandkids and I have to do the same thing. I have to make sure they vote. Right? So 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 that's not that's not our biggest issue is voting, but we need people to vote. We've been voting every year and we still have police brutality in Seaside. We still have police brutality in Monterey County. And we need them to open up those cases in Monterey County where they have lied to us, where they have faked and pretend. And we need you all with us on that. Because we have a stand over here, and we want anybody that's not registered to vote, we, you gotta be with us on the voting, and you gotta be with us on the teams. As we put together these political action teams, you gotta be with us. And our political action teams it has a lot to do with the form that you're filling out, and it has a lot to do with questions. We have 15 different teams. Can you imagine that? Wow. 15 different teams. Now, these teams are for us to go into the community and seek for justice in our community, for black lives. If we get justice for black lives and get them doing right by us, guess who they'll be doing right by? Everybody. Everybody. Exactly. Because, you know, all lives don't matter until black lives do matter. So we need them to do right by black lives and stop playing. City Council in Seaside, we had a prominent preacher call in. Uh, I won't say his name, because if I say prominent preacher, preacher and you was listening to the City Council meeting on the third Thursday of the month, then you would have a clue. And said, we need to stop that mess. Ain't nothing happening in Seaside. Well, I'm here to tell you this. I raised nine kids here, okay? I didn't move to another area and raise my kids I'm here to tell you there is something happening in Seaside and they're burying it. Don't bring that mess here. Seaside is okay. 
I don't know if y'all heard that, but but yeah. that preacher was wrong. He was lying. <laughs> I just told somebody that the other day. But nevertheless, I want you to understand. Don't placate me. Don't pretend. Don't act. Long as you keep covering it up, you're covering it up with a band-aid, and it's my pain you're covering it up just because it's not affecting you. <laughs> just because you are not hurt by it and you cannot empathize with me and you cannot put yourself in my shoes does not mean it's not happening because I'm going to tell you it's happening from a poor mother raising nine kids in the city of Seaside all over this county is happening. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. All over the county. I don't know if you all remember uh, a young uh, Latino guy who uh, got beat 37 times. I never will forget. I marched in Selena. He got 30, 37 beatings by the cop. Beaten. And they said to him, they, they said to the world that saw it all over national TV that he kept moving. Well, try beating me with a billy club a couple times. She don't my body jump and move around. What does that feel like? Can anybody even imagine being hit and both broken bones, broken ribs and everything? Listen, that's why it's important to know that defund the police. Come on with me. Come on. Defund the police. 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 Oh, okay. So now um one one thing that that one thing that's very important that you guys have there this is the book club you guys that's doing this i would drive i drive around for over 20 years into the community and picking up kids some of my kids aren't here because of the pandemic i drive around around in the community and pick up kids and bring them to the book club to read and i would gather people together to do that so one of our young three of our young men well three uh about eight of our kids are here from the book club. But you have heard from one of our kids from the book club, he's in college. Okay? He's in college. Okay? And, and, he, he, and he's going to come to you again. But what I want, by the end of the day, some of y'all are leaving and that's why I'm saying this now. But by the end of the day, this young man is in college and a couple of other of our young people have just graduated. One from our book club, been there since they were five years old, just graduated. MPC, Cardinal, during the pandemic, they hung in there, okay, and I, I want to, I, I, with our book club, I wanted to put a scholarship out to help our young kids because they don't have a, a jump in life, they don't have a lot of help in life, so before you leave here, those that will, I want you to please give a donation, we couldn't do that scholarship. He's now in a four-year college and we couldn't do that scholarship. But we want to do some support to these young people that are in college. We got two good and ready to go into college, into a four-year college, and we want to support them. This is what we do for black lives. This is what we do for black lives. We help black lives. Because I'm proud of these young people in the book club. I want to let you know, my young people in the book club are not in and out of jail. So when you got somebody that are sacrificing and people in the community coming together and picking up these kids and helping these kids, we have the brothers, sorority, uh, I mean, we have the fraternity brothers, we have different ones coming and helping with these kids. When you got that happening, and you can work together, and people like you step in the, in, inside the, uh, step in the plate and, 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 and help out, we can save their lives, and that's what we've done. We saved so many children's lives with the No Life Book Club. You know, we just, we just a nobody, a program, a service in the community, but it meant something to somebody, okay? So I want you to understand that this young man is super awesome. His name is Roshan, listen, his name is Roshan Robinson. I'm sorry, Keyshawn Robinson. But even after with the people that shot and said, give it up for him. share to help. I, I want you to remember that name, Keyshawn Robinson, so you may be able to help his life further down the road. Financially, we need to be able to help because they have stepped on our necks way too long. They have stepped on our backs 
way too long. And we need them to take their feet off our necks and backs. And because of the time that they stepped on our mama's backs, his mama, his daddy's back, we need people to step up to the front and be willing to help serve some kind of way to help them move it forward in life and have a better life. It's so important that we can keep these young people in school and help them out. So when don't, don't, uh, This young man done had some encounters, but he kept plugging. All of our young men done had some encounters, but they kept pushing and they kept moving it forward. And sometimes we just need a little help to do that. Okay, so we're building teams and we're gonna fight for justice, but we also need you all to donate and help people in this, in this drive. Help our young black people that have struggling parents. Okay? Help us. I'm gonna get in my little raggedy car and drive around and probably embarrass these boys, pick them up. But you know, the good part about his mom and dad is they would bring them to where I was at a lot of times. And that was beautiful to have a mother and dad team working together and bring the kids to where you're at. Because I needed that help. I needed that help. I had an old raggedy van that must have got uh, 15 tickets on it before I got rid of it. No registration, no this and that. But I love my kids, I love the community, and I wanted to save kids. I wanted to save kids. So when you hear from Keyshawn Robinson, y'all support him, okay? Y'all support him, he got some good stuff coming. Should have left it high. It would carry better if it's up high. Oh, yo, 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 I'm back on the mic. Hey, um, it's my birthday tomorrow, y'all. Your birthday's on Tuesday? Hey, that's real. That's tight. That's tight. Okay. But look, on my birthday, look, I want I want to be celebrated. I want to be remembered. So, you feel me? For my birthday, I just ask that y'all come out or not even come out. Y'all just make a big-ass meal at y'all houses and let y'all kids and everybody eat. Celebrate it like it's a damn holiday, for real. <laughs> Have a day to where, you know, we all eat. Like, we celebrate, you know, Christopher Columbus Day or Thanksgiving and shit. And... Y'all, half, half the people don't even know why they celebrate. They just celebrate it because everybody says celebrate it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm giving y'all something to celebrate, and this is for a good cause. Yeah. I'm trying to feed y'all families, at, at least. You know what I mean? But yeah, uh, do me a favor. Uh, follow For those who have, like, Instagram shit, follow my page. Knowledge underscore kills. That's me. I do my, all my poetry and everything there. Knowledge underscore kids 12. I'm getting ready to drop some music. I'm going to play a snippet of it. You know what I mean? I'm going to play a snippet of it just to let y'all get a taste of it. But let me know how, how let me know if y'all feeling it or not. Cause you 
the one that sold his dope. Where Jesus went home with the Kill a nigga in the street, how they innocent. For 100 years in this hell, how they innocent. No more protesting, mama, how they innocent. Set in 949, something got to give. Set in 949, something got to give. They took everything from us, how we supposed to live. We tried singing and praying, no more Martin shit. Got a side, pick a side, who you marching with? Y'all feel me? Yeah. Look, I feel me like I'm I'm not really a big time rapper. I just speak I just speak some real shit. On the real. I'm not one of those those people that do the mumbling rapping. I'm not one of those people that just talk off the top of the head. I sit down and I actually think about what's going on in this world. If y'all is still listening to the same shit that y'all was listening to two, three months ago and it, it wasn't helping our people, what the hell are y'all doing? Think about that frequency that y'all receiving. That's, that's negative energy, especially if, it, if they're not speaking for the right cause. Think about all those people that was making music off of mumbling rapping. Where are they at now? You see, they trying to get with the train. Now, now they're trying to rap conscious now. You see what I mean? So don't wait. Look, my thing is, is have some conscious friends, you feel me? And listen to some conscious people talk. Because we're listening to some leaders that don't have no conscious. They don't have, you know, the right interests in mind. So get you some conscious friends, for real, for real. Y'all hear me? Um, spell it. Instagram one more time. Knowledge. K. N. O. Right. <laughs> underscore. Yeah. Knowledge underscore kills. That's why I post all my all my shit. You feel me? Like you can tap in. Oh, you feel me? My shit's not locked at all. You know what I mean? Y'all want to learn some knowledge? I'll teach y'all some knowledge. I post shit every day. You feel me? But yeah, and then another thing too. Can we get a big shout out to Miriam real quick, please? Cause she really did put this together, y'all. She really cared about us. You know what I mean? Back in the day when we was doing these these book clubs and stuff, I was a kid. I didn't know, you know, it really mattered and shit like that. You know what I mean? But going to college and realizing that, damn, I skipped out on a lot of education because the half the time I was sitting there just dribbling the ball or catching a football. I did not learn any of my history at all. I did not learn anything about no real estate at all. I didn't learn anything about no credit, no, you know, nothing at all. So when I was at Heart Now, I did all my time reading and studying and shit. Don't wait until it's too late. For real. Get y'all brothers, get y'all sisters and stuff, everybody that be sitting on the games. Y'all can sacrifice about 30 minutes at least. 30 minutes at least to read a book or write a book or write some poetry. Just, damn, but you, you, you see what I mean though? Y'all can y'all can use y'all time more wisely than what's really going on. Because they got y'all stuck in the matrix for real. You feel me? Stuck in the matrix. So find a way to get out that shit. But like I said, listen to conscious people talk. Because they got the best interest at hand. Thank you though. Hi guys, thank you again all for coming out. I'm just getting um, on the mic to reinforce that uh, if you all could come and fill out these surveys, these pages that we have here at this table, this is a way to get involved. Like I, you know, I'm not, I'm terrible at public speaking. I'm gonna run out of breath in a couple minutes, but I have other skills, you know, I can write, I can organize and I'm, there is a place for you. No matter what your skills are, even if you feel like you don't have any, you do. And so just, you know, take a take a chance. Come sign up with us. We will find a place for you. You will be elemental and vital to this movement. Uh, just by being yourself. There are so many beautiful resources inside of us and we're here to draw those out and to connect us as a community so we can so we can lift everybody up. Um, so the the we also have a way that you can donate, we have a way that you can give your time. If you fill out these sheets and we get your email address and you will get our donation links, you will get calls to action, you will get very specific requests to you to ask if you want to be one of our 15 different teams that are all focusing on different areas and highlighting different skills. So please, if you want to continue this movement beyond marching, come fill out one of these surveys here. We're um, 831 Fest on Instagram. We're um, Community 831 on Facebook. Community 831 on Twitter. 
Um, and so, yeah, be be a part of this. You know, as as Miriam mentioned, you know, we we have so many, we have so much to do. You know, we're we're researching, we're we're looking up people who got swallowed by the system to figure out where they went, stories that got buried, stories that never even got told. Uh, just uh, in 2017, up on Hillby here, a, a gentleman was driving in his car and got pulled over for no reason. Yes, yes, thank you. Gets pulled over for no discernible reason. Uh, it turns out that the officer recognized him as a suspect in a previous burglary, which is illegal for so many reasons. He got uh, he got away. The officer knew where he lived, went to his house, sent him to jail for four years for running away for driving away. So these are the, these injustices are happening right here in Seaside, despite what the city council says, as Miriam mentioned. You know, we the uh, our entire peninsula has these issues uh, in so many ways so we're, we're exposing those and be, be a part of this thank you all for being out here uh, like Keyshawn says this is this is history happening and and courage is the name of the hour we all need to be courageous we all need to be willing to be uncomfortable and in the, in, in, the, in the struggle so let's thank you guys all for being out here uh, oh yeah and so the uh, if anybody wants if anybody isn't able to fill these out and wants to just send us a PayPal donation the email address for PayPal is community 831 MC for Monterey County at Gmail community 831 MC at Gmail so if you want to just send us a PayPal donation, that will go directly to Community831, to Miriam, and Pause the Calls initiative. Pause the Calls is another amazing public safety initiative that you'll learn about from these sheets where we're, Miriam has been working for years to provide the community with alternatives to calling the cops, with public safety alternatives. See, I, I know the phrase defund the police triggers a lot of people. It's just about public safety. It's a public safety redo that we are asking for. Everyone who, who knows a cop or any cop who thinks that they're they are passionate about public safety and that's why they got into policing they should be with us they should be thrilled about this movement because we want to keep ourselves safe and we can keep ourselves safe we are able to take care of ourselves we don't need to be controlled in order to be safe so thank you guys again for, for being out here let's keep it up one more time one more time the PayPal email is community 831 MC for Monterey County at Gmail. All right, thank you guys. I recognize you know my long view. I you know I go about the group. How do you turn it off? There's another one in the back. It's me. You worked at that little pickup room here. Oh no. No. This is super awesome to see all everybody show up, everybody out here, everybody to support Black Lives Matter. You don't know how much we really need your support moving forward. But so on, on so many fronts, you know, on so many fronts, we really need your support. I have, I want you all. I want to um, have someone, someone else uh, come up here and uh, say something. Uh, Ken, you know, you've been helping me a lot. You want to come up here and, and say something to uh, the people that are out here supporting? Uh, Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! The city of Seaside wants you to believe that the cops are just fine. They're not. There's a ton of injustice that happens all the time, every day. I know all of you used to be kids. You were 14, you were 15 before. But you never have to worry about the cops harassing you. You never have to worry about getting stopped for going to the store. Just for hanging out with your friends, trying to play some ball, trying to eat some food, and the cops come and harass you. What the fuck is that about? It's bullshit. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Join the initiative. Be part of history. Join us as we fight the system. Because the system is fucked. The system is not broken. It works exactly as it's supposed to. Join the fight. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. No justice. No peace. No justice.
justice? No peace. No justice? No peace. It's fucked up, everyone. Yes. It's really bad. Yes. You cannot mince words. I know there are children here, but just imagine that those children were getting fucked up every day for no reason other than for the color of their skin? What is that? It's bullshit, that's what it is. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Join us, we need your help. Just like Miriam said, you can't be allies. You have to be comrades, you have to be accomplices. If you want to enact change, you have to help. You have to do something. We can't just march, we can't just protest. We have to take action. Miriam here has been living here in Seaside her whole life. She raised nine children, she has 16 grandchildren. And they're all, all, just... Are they dope? Are they're they fucking dope? dope! They're so dope! I've been hanging out with a couple of them this week. They're really great kids. They don't deserve that. One of them, 14 years old, walking through Sand City. A police officer stops him and says, Hey, how old are you? He says, I'm 14. The cop says, well, wait till you're 15. I'm gonna arrest you and throw you in jail. Why? Be no reason. No fucking reason. There never is. Black and white, you black? What is that? Black and white, you black? Resistance without violence? That is an arrestable charge now. Resistance without violence? They're looking for any way, any fucking way to further the economic gain of the prison, the prison industrial complex. It's all about money. So hit them where it hurts. Boycott those companies that support Trump. Okay? They don't deserve your money. They don't deserve your hard-earned money. Fuck Trump! 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 It's always been about the money. Fuck Trump! It's always been about the money. This country was built on the backs of slave labor. And we have the Emancipation Proclamation, 13th Amendment. What did it do? It just legalized slavery. That's all it did. You have the convict leasing program. Cops, the first cops going out, rounding up ex-slaves so they can be put to work on plantations that they were just freed from. This has been happening for hundreds of years. It's all about the money. Fuck the money. Fuck the government! Fuck the cops! Defund the police! Defund the police! Defund the police! Abolish the police! Abolish the police! This is your right! It's your right. So take the fight to them. You're all here. You're all here. Just like Kishan said, a movement can start out real big, but then people get bored, people get tired. But you're not tired. You're not bored. You're here to fight. We're all here to fight. Thank you. The revolution will not be televised. So uh, I want to share with you all that the revolution will not be televised. So I want you guys to understand that uh, we have a, a, a blackout right now. And we're saying don't buy from any store until July the 7th. Don't buy from any place but black-owned businesses. Support the black-owned businesses. We have somebody, uh, a young black man that lost his job during the pandemic. He's back over here selling shirts. I need people to support this young man. He's got t-shirts, Black Lives Matter shirts, and he's got... mistreated far too long and we want you if we have a blackout especially from July the 1st to July the 7th don't buy a set for black businesses we have a blackout they will understand it if they don't understand nothing else they understand economics they understand money when the money's not coming so uh, there are there are several so I'm gonna let him say them because he's gonna read you some of the places to, that support Trump is very racist and uh, places to not shop at or go.
here are some places that uh, gave money for Trump's re-election. Bang, In-N-Out, Chick-fil-A, Taco Bell, McDonald's, Wendy's, KFC, Pizza Hut, Olive Garden, Waffle House, IHOP, and Carl Jr. And there's more other than that. Is Joanne, one of my team members, hiding somewhere? Joanne? She was right up here in the front. Oh, can you come over here, honey? Now, this ought to get you a, a white girl with blue hair. I mean, purple hair. <laughs> For Black Lives Matter. I did not expect this. I think it's great that everyone's out here today. And I want to say that... If you look like me and you're late to the fight. That's okay. Welcome. I had a lot to learn. And I'm sorry it took me so long. But I have an obligation. And I think if you look like me, you have an obligation as well to stand up, to use your privilege, to use your voice, to use your body, to shield our black and brown brothers and sisters. Find a way to get involved. You don't have to be in front of it. If you don't think you know what to say, just shut up and listen. And if someone asks you to do something, do it. If Miriam says, hey, I need your help, go help her. Yes. It's not as hard as you think. We have a lot to make up for. We have a lot to make up for. But we can start right now. Tell your friends. Talk to your family. Don't let the shit slide that we've let slide because it's uncomfortable. It's time for us to be uncomfortable because our comfort has been built on death and our comfort has been built on oppression and our comfort has been built on the blood of innocent people. And we have to make up for that and it's hard. But fuck, let's start now. Thank you, give it over Joanne. Now she has been helping me, helping me, helping me input all this information and then we finally got more help. But she started off helping me, helping me, helping me. Her and a couple of other people. But she has been dedicated. I, I mean, I can call on her day and night. She'll hang out with me. And we'll put some stuff together. Because we're creating a political action team to take this agenda forward. Beyond the marches, into the conversation that we're having with you all right now. About making sure we get justice. Not just you get justice, but I want justice too. And it's time to have somebody else on my team fighting for justice for me and the next black person. And I'm saying to you, if you have a platform, pass the mic. We have pain that we've been suppressed and we've been oppressed and we've been holding on to this pain for a mighty long time. And people have platforms and they won't pass the mic. But if you have a platform, and if you have a black friend or a black acquaintance or a black person you know, pass the mic. Allow that person to get on the platform. Allow that person to share their story. Allow that person to share their pain. Pain. Pass the mic. Pass the mic to me, Miriam Smith, or pass the mic to somebody that's black. But we're asking you to pass the mic today because it's time that people hear the truth. It's time that people stop suppressing us. It's time that people stop oppressing us. It's time that people stop pushing us to the side and telling us, hey, don't pay, pull that race car. Ain't no such thing as pulling that race car. We're telling you the truth. It's time you're listening to our stories and it's time you listen to the truth now. Because you know what? Enough is enough. And you know what? We're sick and tired of saying that we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. But it's, so, but it's time for us to have some accomplices to show up with us. So I hope that everybody has ran down up over here and filled out one of these forums because we need people to show up with us. If you all have not heard my story as to why I'm in this chair, I'm going to tell it again one day. And if those that know it, know it, you can share it with one another. This is not the day I choose to tell my story, but I will tell it again one day. Okay, and it has a lot to do with the lies that are being covered up and the stories that are being told and you're not getting the truth. So it's time for you all to hear the truth 
it's time for you all to stand with us. It's time for you to pass somebody the mic. Get behind us. This movement is not over. The protest, they need to know that we are in the house when we protest. When you show up with us, it's, they need to know that you're showing up with us as our strength. And we're not asking anymore. We're not asking anymore. Maybe somebody over here didn't hear me. We're not asking anymore. We are demanding. And we need you riding with us. How about that? You want to ride with us? We need you riding with us. Because it's so important. I'm asking white folks, women and men, to be our human shield. They play too many games. I'm asking you to have your eyes and your ears open and pay attention to reality. They play games, they pretend, and I know you guys like to say, oh, they didn't mean it like that. Yes, they did. And you've been covering it way too long. Oh, she didn't mean it like that. Yes, she did. And you've been covering it way too long. It's time for you to stop covering the little racism in your families and start stepping up to the plate and letting change happen, making change happen, and be the change that you're looking for. It is time. Because who gets tired of saying enough? The underdog. And you have the nerve to get tired of hearing us say enough is enough. Well, be the change that we are looking for. Be the change that you are looking for. And you know what? You don't have a clue as to some of the things young black people and older black people go through in the criminal justice system. Just start looking how much, how, 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 how many of us are in the jails. For the same reason that they let your brother or your sister go, or your cousin or your friend, or your mom and daddy, or you. We're in jail. We get longer time because you know what? They get money off our backs. They've been getting money off our backs from the time we were slaves to now. It's just we're not free because they keep stopping our young men. This is a very important thing I want to point out to you all because if you see people stopping people, stop assuming they bad and they in trouble and get out there and do some cop watching. Do some videoing. Video the cops. Police the police. They, they stopping our young men, giving them a record for no reason. Don't you know if you change stuff for black folks, you're going to change stuff for other folks? Because then they're not getting away with it like they've been getting away with it. Be ready to open your eyes. And if you, those of you that have filled out this, and if you have not, everybody has not filled out, I need you to come and fill it out. But those of you that have filled out to be a part of the team, you're going to get information. We're going to open your eyes. We're going to send you out stuff. We're going to let you know. So I want to let you know something that you guys got to watch out for, help us out in this community. They are stopping our young kids, black and brown kids, in Monterey County, and they're taking pictures of them under the age of 18 years old. Cops are pulling the kids over and taking their pictures. Don't you know that's wrong? That's a violation of their rights. That's a violation of their mother rights. They're under 18 years old. Ain't no cop got no business stopping them and taking his picture and putting it in their database. Now, I had a young man that was going to come and talk about that because that happened to him. And then when he got grown, they used that picture that they took of him at 15 or 16 years old. They used it against him when he got grown. And we got to stop that. When you see them messing with black folks and messing with people in the street, get out and pull your camera out. Video them cops. Because they playing games, they trying to pretend like Seaside is all okay. They doing this right here in Seaside. And the young man is not here to tell you about it. He'll be here another time. They pulled him up and then they start acting like he had a rap sheet from pulling up that picture. That they just pulled him over on the side of the street corner and took his picture. They doing that in, in, in uh, Salinas. They doing that in Seaside. And they doing that other places. And we got an officer shooting that happened in Seaside. Now they done moved that officer over to uh, CSUMB. The guy was running away when he was when he shot him. The investigation was done by another cop. We gotta stop that. That's illegal. Stop that. We can't let them another cop investigate another cop. Bring the heat down on them. Speak up about this stuff. Stop that. Stop that. And we need you to stand with us. We need you to move with us. We need you to march with us. We need you to make sure this stuff stops in this community. If we not free, you not free. They gonna sooner or later get you too. It ain't no joke. If young people are with other and and they're not black and they're with other people, they gonna hurt the other people that they with because they young people riding with black people or rolling with black people and then they'll start hurting that person. 
So we need you all to stop that. You guys are responsible. Guess where the power is? The power of the people won't stop. Let me hear you guys. Come on. The power of the people won't stop. The power of the people won't stop. Who got the power? The power of the people won't stop. Together, everybody. I am somebody. Yeah, but you can't pull black out of any other color. 
So black is the universal color that represents all lives. So when we say black lives, we're talking about every single shade.
Rachel, don't worry about it.
something else. Um, I would like to see if there's anybody that would like to have anything to say, huh? Okay, here you go, Tay. Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you, Miriam. I want to say this. Um, I have not shared any parts of my story at any protest, so I do want to share a little snippet of my story. First, I want to say it's not easy to stand up here and stand up and speak up against wrongdoing. That takes a lot of courage. So we're grateful for you all as well. And um, all I want to say is that we're invoking change. We're invoking change. Yes, we are. So I was. Everybody heard my poetry, right? I'm a loving, I'm a loving, kind person, right? But because of my skin color, because of my strength and my strong personality, I am categorized as an angry black woman to systemic racism. So because of that, because of that stigma that's been placed on me as being a strong black woman, I endured some of the unfair cruelties that systemic racism has set in place. So my son went to school, my kids went to school in Soledad, here in Monterey County. And the school was 1% black. It was only my kids and another family of black kids in the school. And um, one day I went to pick up my son from school. It was the last day of school for that school year. It was during for the Christmas play that they had. And when I went to school to pick up my son, I watched the entire play and my son never came out on stage. So I had my two other daughters with me at the time. One was six and um, my baby was one years old. So we watched the entire Christmas show waiting on my son to come out on stage and he never came out on stage. So after that play, I went to the classroom to ask the teacher, like, where's my son? Why didn't he come out on stage? She said, well, he's in the office, so we need to talk to you. So I go to the office, and my son's sitting in the office with a CPS worker and a police officer. Yeah. My son had gotten in trouble at school that day for something he was doing, and the teacher said, we're going to call your mom. And he said, no, don't call my mom. I'm going to get in trouble. Because my son had already been acting up at home, and I told him he wasn't going to get what he wanted for Christmas. I told him we was going to take his Christmas money and buy toys and donate them to children in homeless shelters. I was still going to get him something, but I wanted him to learn the value of Christmas. So he was so worried about getting in trouble at school that he told the teacher, no, don't tell my mom. Don't tell my mom. She's going to spank me. So I go to the school.
school to pick up my kids, well, to pick up my son with my other two kids, and they have CPS and the caseworker there. Everybody in the room is not black. Of course, I'm the only black woman in there with a big afro and tattoos, and I'm telling them, you're not going to take my kids. They said, oh, we're going to take your kids. Either you're going to, you're going to be in handcuffs. or So they took my kids, all three of my kids, from the school without doing an investigation because my son said that I spanked him with a belt. So they told me on the next, they told me they were going to take my kids to the hospital to see if there was any evidence of physical abuse. So on that Thursday night, this was the Thursday night, they took my kids to the hospital, saw that there was no evidence of physical abuse, and called me in for a meeting with the supervisor and um, an active, like a judge, person who was judging. And the supervisor asked the caseworker, she said, well, was there any evidence of abuse? She said, there was no evidence of abuse. So they checked, my kids had never missed a doctor's appointment, Dennis, they were healthy from head to toe. There's never been any evidence of abuse. She never did any investigation. She just went off my son saying that I was going to spank him for getting in trouble. Never checked my house. Never asked me anything. They just told me that they were going to take my kids. And I told them, I said, you know, they said, well, the lady said, she said, your kids are afraid of you. I said, my kids are not afraid of me. You're afraid of me. You're supposed to be afraid of me because I'm their mother. I'm trying to take a cub away from a lion and watch what it do. You know, so that's what I let her know. So the next day they call me into this office. The supervisor says, there was no evidence of abuse. You have to give this woman back her kids. She said, I don't want to be the one to take her kids back to her. You do it. This is what this those social worker told her supervisor. Her supervisor said, no, you took her kids from her. You take them back to her. So she said, well, what time are you going to bring her kids? She said, I don't know. I don't know. I have a lot to do. She said, well, this woman, you have her kids. You have to tell her what time you're bringing her kids back. So she told me 4 o'clock. So at 4 o'clock, I'm at home waiting on her to bring me my kids. They didn't show up. 5 o'clock, my kids didn't show up. 6 o'clock, my kids didn't show up. At 6.15, I got a call because I lived in a gated community. So she had to call me in order to get buzzed in the gate to bring the kids to my house, which she never had checked on before took, taking them. She just assumed we were a poor black family. She didn't even know who I was or anything about me. She just assumed and categorized me as an angry black woman. So she came to my house. She brought the kids in. My son, he was looking. He was like, oh, my God. You know, he's like, Mom, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And she was like, you don't have to be sorry for telling the truth. I was like, ma'am, just just leave it alone. She was like, you know your kids are afraid of you? I said, my kids are not afraid of me. She said, you know what? I'm not leaving these kids here. I'm not leaving these kids here. And I said, you're not taking them out of here either. She said, yes, I am. Watch me. She picked up her phone and she called her supervisor. She said, these kids are too afraid for me to leave them here. So I picked out my phone and I started recording her. She went outside the door and she called the police. The police came back and said, we're here to take the kids. I said, no, you're supposed to assess the situation and see if it's necessary to remove my kids. I recorded it. I have it all on video. It's on YouTube. Look me up, LaVisha Franklin. I've been recording every step all the way through. Long story short, long story short, she took my kids out of there and it was on a Friday, so I didn't know anything. I couldn't, there was nobody for me to call or talk to or anything about my kids until that Monday morning. And then she told the judge that my kids didn't want to see me. So for almost three weeks, I was not told the whereabouts of my children. So finally, I called and made complaints and um, I was allowed to see my kids. I recorded this video too, my first time seeing my kids after they were removed them. And my kids said, Mom, why did it take so long for us to see you? I said, well, the caseworker told the judge that you all didn't want to see me. My kids told me for the first time on video, she told us that you didn't want to see us. This is what she told my kids, that I didn't want to see them. That's Every wrong. time I went to a meeting with them, they slid a piece of paper in my face. They said, if you don't want to do what we tell you to do, you can just sign them over. You can walk away from this. You can just give us your kids. And I said, no, I'm doing whatever I have to do. So for the first three months, I attested it. 
So I, that was time that was lost. They pretty much said they, they never looked at the video. They never looked at anything that I had to say. The judge pretty much went with everything that the CPS worker said. And um, there was never any justification. There was never any proof or evidence of physical abuse, any type of abuse at all. And not only that, they took my kids in December, two weeks before Christmas, two weeks before my baby turned two years old. Um, and then in February, my son told his lawyer that he lied on me. He said, I lied on my mom, I want to go home. And he started to try to commit suicide. So he tried to hang himself, he tried, he tried to stab himself a couple of times. And he was put under all kind of um, therapeutic watches and things like that. So, long story short, it took me 15 months to get my kids back for nothing so and this is Monterey County so you can't tell me that systemic racism is not present that time I can't get back with my kids but you know what because of because of my favor from God my kids were placed in a great home my kids were placed with great foster parents who loved me and allowed me to be a part of my kids life so I, I missed out like the first six months but after they got to know me and my kids, they was like, you know, your kids had no reason being in foster care. Your kids love you. You love your kids. And I was welcomed in their house. I was welcomed to be a part of my kids' life. And I have my kids back. They're great. They're awesome. They love mommy. And it's like that time is just a memory for us now, even though my kids were just returned back to me in March of 2020. They were taken away December 2018. And I'm still fighting. I'm still fighting. Stop CPS corruption. Stop CPS corruption. It's all about money. It's all about money because my son who made the initial complaint, he was diagnosed with ADHD and ODD and he received social security disability benefits. And in the system, um, foster parents, not only did they get that, when he's in my custody, I only, uh, my, my, well, the checks that he received, that I received from Social Security benefits for him amount in $500. But in foster care, the foster parents received $1,300 from disability for my son, in addition to the foster care payments. And each child in the foster care system pays for at least five CPS workers' um, salary, salary, yes. Every child pays for five workers' salary. So it's, Blood money. It's, it's, that's all it is. Blood. And, and, and black and brown families are easy victims for CPS. So unity, unity is power. And you know what? I went through the first 10 months of the case by myself, fighting by myself. But as soon as some more people started standing up with me, they knew they had to hurry up and let it go. And what that's what they don't expect. They don't expect for us to come together. And unity, we, we're, we have strength in numbers. And I'm just so glad to see everybody here. And that's just a part of my story, and that's why I fight. Thank you for sharing that story. And I want to say that's that I... That's my first time sharing it. We, we, give it up for her. Give it up for her. Show us some love, you guys. So glad you got your kids back. What I have, what I do, is because of what happened to me, and I'm in this chair. I do it more so now than I ever did. But for over 25 years, I've been helping parents fight and stop CPS. So now I have went across the country. I fly all over the place wherever somebody raised money and sent for me because I am poor. And they will send for me to come, and I have knowledge about CPS and the corruption in CPS. 40% more black children are taken by CPS and kept 40% longer in foster care than their white counterparts. And this is true. This is real. They pick on us because we are poor, and they pick on us because of racist, systematic racism in the schools, in the police department, in the child protective services department, in the community. 
and somebody call the cops on you for your kids, they may have CPS short. Because we don't have the money all the time to fight them in the court and the lawyers don't know how to fight most of the time. Our kids get left behind. Now, I've had this argument a couple of times in the last two years with white people. And they say, no, blue-eyed, blonde-haired babies get adopted more. Well, how many people know that white folks are the majority in the country? So if our black babies are taking 40% more than white people's babies and kept 40% longer in the foster care, it's probably because the majority of the people out there that have money to take care of them that can adopt them or want to adopt them are white and they're not looking for white babies. So this, this uh, racist to me argument is blonde hair, blue eyed babies are adopted. So check that one out. But what I want to say on top of what she was saying is 25 people's salary is paid off of one child in the system. How many children did you have? Three. No, they, they got the psychiatrists, they got the psychologists for you, they got the social workers, they got the judges, they got the attorneys, and, it, and the list goes on. Okay? The list goes on. They got every specialist they can think, think of. And if a child is oppositional defiant and has a, 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 a ADHD, they can get up to $36,000 a month for that child for three months. Then they can return with psychologists. I'm just saying what they do to our black children, okay? They destroy them in the system. Then our, our black children are not alone, but if you pay more attention to what they're doing to the black children, then you can stop them from doing some of that stuff to the other children. So, I am a gatekeeper for Monterey County, and I'm a gatekeeper across the country. Look up NP, uh, Facebook, Stop CPS. What is a gatekeeper? So I stand in the gate. I, I stand in the gap, and I watch CPS. So I'm a CPS watcher. What is that? And I train, I'm a popular education trainer, and I train people how to stop CPS. So. If you want, if you know anybody that needs, that's having a problem with CPS, I help everybody. And um, if they're having a problem with CPS, I'm not a lawyer. What did I say? I'm a popular education trainer. So I go all over the country and I train. And I teach people how their, their constitutional rights and what's violated. They violated her fourth and her 14th amendment right. And she could fight with that if she knew how in the court. And what I do is I teach parents how to fight to win and get their children back home. This is real, you guys. This is real. They target poor people. And black people suffer the most at the hands of Child Protective Services. That is, it's real. And what I do is every child is also worth up to $84,000 a year in the system. Did you hear me? Yes. Your taxpayers' money is being paid for them, the corrupt system, the small government, our local county government, to rip off the state. And sometimes it's the state government, because in Arizona it's the state government. California is the small county government, the state. And they're ripping off the bigger government, the federal government. But guess where the money's coming from? It's all coming from you all, our taxes. It's all coming from us. It's coming from the people. So they rip off these governments and they take our children and you got, uh, uh, I had a, a white lady recently in, in um, March call the cops, I mean call the, uh, report me at a uh, grocery outlet. Now she's yelling at me about something she thought I should be doing and um, my child is out there uh, and I'm in, I done went from the wheelchair twice, two or three times in grocery outlet right here and bought something and so and this happens constantly this is just a recent story this year but uh so i go inside a uh, grocery outlet i come back i come back out and i'm in the car and she's yelling at me about my child and i was like it's none of your business well she got through yelling at me and talking about, talking about me calling me names and everything i rolled my whip up on her and there was three thank god three white women that began to go to bat for me 
and began to speak for me. Right here at Grocery Outlet, here in Seaside. Let's show you how racist folks is, okay? Those three white women said, um, well, why don't you leave her alone? You don't have nothing to do with that. That's none of your business. I, I just rolled my window up. So the, one of the white ladies came over and, and older, the older one, two other white ladies, they got in their car and left after the lady went inside. One of the other white ladies came over and started talking to me. Well, the manager of the store comes out. I opened my door to talk to her because I had already rolled up my window. And the manager comes out and said, were you talking, just walked over to me and said, were you uh, in an argument or with somebody here or, or talking uh, disagreement or whatever? I said, well, this white lady was just yelling at me and she went inside. She told me I had been at Grocery Outlet long enough and she's going to ask me to leave. Grocery Outlet right here. Okay. That was in March. Okay. And I said, oh, you want to be racist. I don't see you walking that lady out of here. I don't see you telling that lady to leave. I said, she, I just told you she was yelling at me. All she wanted to do was identify the black lady that the white lady went in there and complained about. She wanted to identify who this black lady was and tell me to leave. And so she said, well, you're calling me racist. I'm not being racist. So I'm going to just call the cops on you, show you how seaside cops are. Okay? So I said, I'm not scared of the police. Call the cops. I don't know why. I know the police. I know almost every police in this, and I know their corruption, and I know, their, I know about them. I know who they are in city of seaside, okay? So I told her, I said, but you are being racist. Now what you need to do is go in there and get that lady that was out here yelling at me and get her out to the store and tell her to leave. You don't come out here and tell me I've been here long enough and leave. I done went in there and bought something three times, got three receipts. And she decided I've been here long enough. Now is that not racist? That's embedded. And, then, and she was okay with that. She was okay with that. And she called the cops. And the cops actually showed up and questioned me. And I said, yeah, I'm her. I'm not going nowhere. And I didn't go nowhere until I got ready. Cops wasted 40 minutes of their time in the city of Seaside. Defund the police, right? Yeah. Defund the police. Yeah. And we gotta stop, we gotta speak up for people when stuff like that happens. That lady had no business wasting the taxpayers' dollars calling the police. That's what I'm talking about, by pause the cops. Pause the cops. She had no business wasting taxpayers' dollars calling the police on me because she said I've been here long enough. Make so bad I'm parked in the handicap. Did you not know in the state of California I could be in the handicap all night? Did you guys understand the rules of the state of California? I'm sitting in the handicap parking spot. I could be there all night. Do you not know I don't pay any fines in the handicap spot? Anywhere in California? Do the, do the history. Do, do your work. Do your, do your research. Okay? Okay. But that lady told me I had been there long enough. She didn't care if I was sick. She didn't care if I was hurting. She didn't understand. When the cop came, he said, you waiting on somebody? I said, yeah, I'm waiting on somebody. I'm not going to work until they, until they come. He went in and talked to her, came back, you know. And but when I got ready, when the person showed up that I was waiting on, I left. But I'm just saying right here in the city of Seaside to deal with that kind of stuff and for that little white girl to think it was okay to go call the cops on me as the manager. And, and, and how the sick the cops on me like I care. You know how many people call the cops on me in the city of Cesar? Yes. They call the cops a lot because I'm black. Now they're not going to call the cops on nobody white as much as they will with us. Now I said all that because a lot of times because the city of Seaside know me, but if it has anything to do with kids, then a lot of times they will bring CPS in. Okay? And try to harass you. I had to protest Dickies. It's closed down. It's the only place I ever had to protest my whole uh, 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 grown life in the uh, city of Seaside. Dickies. I protest Dickies two years ago because I, when I went inside Dickies, the barbecue place, love to eat there. I don't know if anybody remember that little place right here. When I went inside there, ate, and they had, for the whole month of January, I think 2018, they had a special that the kids would eat free. So on Sundays we would go there, kids eat free. But they did it for the whole month of that January. So we ate, and the kids like to go there, so we go there after church on Sunday. So we did this three times. When we showed up this day, the lady was was uh, a Latinx, and um, that was the manager. She's now the manager of, uh, of uh, Mount Mike's. But she was a uh, manager of, of uh, the barbecue place at that time. We showed up, this third time we showed up, 
The second time we showed up, they turned off the ice cream machine, but they told us it was broken. The third time we showed up, they turned off the ice cream machine, and they told us it was broken. But there was this white couple that sat in the back that heard a white man heard them tell us, this is how you're supposed to do things, y'all, by the way. Heard them tell us that it was broken when the kids went back there to get ice cream. You know, because they gave free ice cream. Bottom line is, the white man stood up in the middle of the aisle in the back of Dickies and said, I got ice cream and started licking it. Racism is so bold. They had turned the ice cream machine off on us black kids, us black folks coming in Dickies to eat ice cream. So we started picking. Why did we start picking? Because black children's lives matter too. So we stood out there with signs in front of Dickies, black children's lives matter. Within a couple of days, the owner of Dickies, I didn't know him, I know how to smoke folks out now. I didn't know him from Adam. He called me and asked me, the police department tried to shut us down and we, we went, I ain't scared of the police. I'm not scared of the police here or nowhere. They tried to shut us down, told us we couldn't be here and da 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 da. We wasn't going nowhere as we were protesting Dickies. Because how are you going to tell us the ice cream machine is broke and then this white man trying to show us that the ice cream machine is not broken and just shut up. So anyway, the kids was upset about it and everything. So I'm, I'm, I'm there, the police officer trying to shut us down. He, he gonna come uh, and get up in one of the, uh, where is he at? Oh, he's here with me. His face, and he was about uh, eight or so. He gets up in his face and start asking him his name. I said, you don't have a right to say anything to him, back up. And that's what we gotta understand. When they go around here taking pictures of these kids in the community, we need to take pictures of them. We need to take videos of them because they don't have the right getting in nobody's kid's face when their parents ain't there. And I said, you can't say nothing to him, don't say nothing to him. Next thing I know, CPS is coming at my door all the time. But the owner of that place was calling me, telling me, please stop. Whatever you want, we'll do it. Please stop. Within months, that store was closed down. Within months, that store was closed down. But the police officer started sending CPS to my house. Because I wouldn't let him get in my baby's face and talk to my baby. I'm not scared of CPS, but I want you to know that the system is racist. The system is embedded with it. And they will sit the police CPS on you. And if you don't know your rights, now CPS come up on me. And I, and I, and I can tell you, they will back up right away because I know the law. I know my rights. And I know, what they, I know their job. I know their job. And what they did to her was wrong. It was very wrong. They came at me with this little boy, they never, they didn't mess with me no more once they realized who I was. And once they realized what, you know, they're gonna come, oh, we, we, we got a family uh, group that we want you to talk to. We, you're not in trouble. No, I'm gonna tell you what, you're not in trouble. Get out my yard. Get out my yard. And if you have a warrant, come back with a warrant. But don't come back up in my yard no more, you're not welcome. Don't knock on my door no more. Put a poster up on your, your uh, fence poster in your window that say CPS is not welcome here don't come without a warrant and you can even do that with police officers I had to do it with police officers right here in Seaside California right up the street I had to put a sign up and tell the police they not welcome so I started locking my gate that's how my CPS you know I raised nine kids I got 16 grandkids we don't do it right we poor we poor how can we possibly do it right we don't do it right so CPS shut to my door. They have to ask me to unlock the gate. And I have to tell them to get out my yard. Talk to me at the um, sidewalk. Get out my yard. Same with the police. They ain't got no miss running up to my house. Get out my yard. You ain't got a warrant? Come back when you get one. Police and CPS. So there's a lot of rules, laws, that people have to be taught to follow. I'm not a, a lawyer. But I'm darn good in the courthouse when it comes down to getting stuff done. Trust me. Okay? And we want to move this agenda forward, helping mothers and helping families and helping people in our community. We want to move this agenda forward. And we want to get the job done. And if you know anybody having a problem, it don't matter if they're black, white, or who they are. If they're having a problem with CPS, I probably got the answer. I could probably help them. So look up Stop CPS on, on Facebook, tell them to join that, and tell them to ask questions, and we'll have probably have the answer. Because there's rules to follow even if you did something wrong. They ain't got no business taking her kids because her kids are scared of her. 
There's a rule to follow. There's steps to take. You leave that, if it's a non-emergency, don't take the kid. If that cat is not about life or death, he's just scared. But that was what she said because she got mad at the mother. You see how they do you when you don't know the rules and laws? Especially us black people, it happens to us even more. We t it it takes her 10 months to get a, a support system. It takes us, most of the time, it takes us 10 months to a year to get a support system. Now, if I was white and I knew as much as I know, I could probably get a support system in 30 days because they're going to believe me. No white people, they said, uh-uh, this is impossible that it be happening to you. If I just tell you a story, they're going to believe it. Just like that lady walked in that store, right there at Grocery Outlet, right here in Seaside, California, and told whatever she told, I don't know what she told that lady, had that lady come outside looking for me, a black woman that she had a conversation with. Doing her whole job. Yeah. For what? Come look for me, because I'm black. I, I was identified as black, so she asked the first black lady that she saw. So, you need to understand, this stuff is real. It's hidden, it grins in your face, but it hides. It throws a rocks and hide. It's hidden in plain sight, right in your face. Right in our face, racism, hidden in plain sight. But it's real. I wanted to have Mimi say something. I'm sorry, I just, I got, I got anointed, y'all. <laughs> anointed the talk when I heard Tay talking, and I don't want to go any further past Mimi. I'm gonna have to say. Okay, so um, what I wanted to talk about, and Miriam kind of touched on it was the situation regarding the legalities of everything that's going on. So the first thing, everyone that knows me knows I'm a book hoarder. I love books. If you got an issue, I got a book that will give you some information on that issue. So the first thing is there's a book, just uh, I think it's maybe now two years old, and the name of that book is called The Right to Remain Silent. I recommend everyone get that book. It's written by a defense attorney. And the first thing he recommends is that when you are dealing or you have an interaction with police is exercise your right to remain silent. If you choose to identify yourself, do that, but remain silent until you have proper counsel or if you're a minor, until you have your parents present or have proper counsel. So that's the first thing. The second thing is when it comes to uh, these situations with police brutality, a lot of times we've seen that the officers basically get off. It's very rare that an officer is actually prosecuted and properly sentenced, etc. And there's a reason for that. And I need people to understand that reason and to start working towards correcting that. In every police department, there are contracts negotiated for police officers. And those contracts stipulate what happens if a police officer is involved in an incident. In some areas, sorry, I gotta check on my son. In some areas of the nation, an officer can be involved in a fatality and not have to give a statement um, for weeks at a time. Now, of course, if you're a civilian that is caught in you know an incident with a fatality, you normally have to give a statement right away, or you might exercise your right to remain silent, but still have to give your statement within hours, you know, with proper counsel. But there are places in this nation where an officer can go weeks without actually giving a statement regarding something that happened. Also, in those contracts, they will stipulate whether an officer gets automatic paid leave, whether they get assigned to a desk. So the thing is, is that the people have the power and you have the power to demand that information, which the last city council meeting that was online, um, when they went over the uh, use of force policy, I brought up in the public comment section that we also need to go over the incident policy because the public has the right to know what happens in Seaside if there is a fatality, what happens with that officer. Also, the other thing is we need to start looking at these prosecutors because a good prosecutor, as the saying goes, can prosecute a ham sandwich and get an indictment. But with a lot of these officers, that's not happening. And so we need to also understand that. And we also need to make sure that if you are in a situation where you can do jury duty, we need to exercise that right to do jury duty. Because the thing is, is that when you're in trial, even though everyone has a right to due process, you are tried, you're supposed to be tried by, by your peers. And the thing is, is when it comes to black victims of these police brutality, we don't have a lot of representation on the jury. And so a lot of times, this is another reason why these officers get off. And then we
we also need to example too, examine too in the, in the way that these juries are picked that a lot of times for African Americans and Latinos, a lot of times you are kicked off of juries before the case even starts if you have had an incident with police because they say that you're biased. But the thing is, is that's not our problem. That is very common in the black community, but that would make us appear for others in the black community. So that should not be allowed. And then the last thing I want to say, when it comes to these cases, the reason why we have to be adamant about fighting these cases is because there's a there's a term, a Latin term, um, and it's it said it as stare decease. If it's S T A R E, and then second word D E C I S, it's a Latin term. Basically, what that term is is that prior cases decide future cases. So as these officers continue to get off, it sets up case law for future cases. And that's why the officers continue to get off. So again, we are the people, we have the power, we can fight that, and we can make sure that the, these officers start getting prosecuted. So again, it, it just takes the people mobilizing and getting together to get this stuff taken care of. Um, some other, uh, another book I'd like to recommend in regards to policing, um, there's a book by a man by the name of Norm Stamper. He's a former Seattle police officer. His book is called Breaking Rank. It's basically exposing the dark side of policing. I recommend everybody read that book and educate themselves. And again, along with the book, The Right to Remain Silent, I can't think of the, the gentleman's name, but he is a, uh, a law, uh, he's a defense attorney and a law professor. Um, I want to say in Virginia or South Carolina or something. So again, um, it's called The Right to Remain Silent. Charles Brand, is that right? I don't think so. I, I want to say it's like Jeffries or something. It's a, it's a, it's it just it's only about two years old, but I recommend both of those books. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. for Mimi. Thank you, Mimi. So I'm I'm adopting her into our team, and um, she's really good at at researching and getting things done. I want to say that um, there's some machaca. Huh? Machata. We have horchata over here. Greek. Horchata. So, uh, those of you that's been out here, I, I, we, uh, he forgot to announce it when he was talking. I forgot to announce it earlier, and we have some for you all. And and we, I certainly do thank you for coming. But let me tell you something. You are troopers that are still here. sometimes and one o'clock in the morning and we'll come at a certain time and then we gotta go we only got two hours for this <laughs> we'll come we'll march in here and there but we gotta go i want to let you know if justice is going to be done if we're going to get justice we're going to have to stand for a little bit longer than what we've been standing for in monterey county yeah yeah, yeah we was at were you there oh, we was at morgan hill <laughs> Oh my God! So we were at Morgan Hill last night until after 11 o'clock. Okay, we marched. I just was like so for for getting the kids out of the cage again. Another CPS thing because the court is so corrupt. They put the kids, took them from the parents, separated these kids from the immigrant kids from the parents, put them in cages, and they were supposed to give them back to the parents over a year ago. Over 1,500 kids didn't get given back. They're still stuck in cages, and they're adding more kids to it constantly. So CPS gets a little bit of that dollar. The government gets some of that dollar. And some of these kids were adopted out without ever properly notifying the parents. Wow. They were adopted out. Wow. Wow. That's my big old boy. But anyway, um, they were adopted out. They were hand it over to other people so they can have a life, so they can have a family. And some parents can't even find out where their children are. They don't even know how to put these families back together. But guess who's making money off of them? The government. You think they're not getting paid for them kids being in the cages, piled up on top of each other, little kids, nobody taking care of those little kids? They are getting paid. This corruption is deep. They're getting paid for it. So we were there last night at the um, Morgan Hill March. 
I was so proud of those people, those dancers. I have a new respect for the dancers. Yes, they dance like five miles. Oh my gosh, a new respect. We marched from the Gavelin Park to the detention center in Morgan Hill. And when we marched from the Gavelin Park to the detention center in Morgan Hill, when we got there, the dancers stopped and danced along the way, okay? I guess it was about a two hour march almost. When we got there, Okay, you talk about tired, y'all tired, huh? Y'all tired just hearing about this one, huh? So when we got there, guess what happened? The dancers danced another half an hour to 40 minutes longer. They danced all around the way. Oh my gosh. They would stop at, at most of the intercession and dance. Oh my God, if I was walking around, I could not feel sorry for myself. <laughs> because those dancers... Yes. Yes. Oh, I enjoyed myself. I have a whole different respect. But guess what? We're all in this together. We're all in this together. If I hurt, my brother and my sister over here hurts. It don't matter what color you are. But we're moving the agenda because black lives matter because they always get left behind in every subject matter when we decide civil rights, when we decide putting the movement together whenever we decide they get left behind. But we are in this together. We all hurt. We all bleed the same. We all got feelings. Guess what? We're all human. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. Moving forward the human race. But you're left behind when you leave us behind. And there's no way kids should be in cages. It should have never happened. Never happened. How many people can say, not on my watch? Not on my watch. Let me hear that again. Not on my watch. I tell you what, I think I need them to hear you all the way in Salinas. Come on. Not on my watch. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I think they heard you. Now, I think you mean it. And I think you're going to do something about it. And I want you to join our team. Because we're going to definitely make some things happen in Monterey County. We're about to wake these folks up. Immigration and life matter too. And I want you to know how important it is for us as a people to stand together united. We stand. What, what country are we in? America. United States of America. Don't, don't they have, wait a minute, isn't something like that inside of their stuff that, you know, you know, America's never been America to me. Okay. That, that, that great America and all that's never been that to me. But what country are we in? United States. And, and doesn't it say the United States? But we got to stand together. United we stand and guess what it else it says? Divided. We fall. Is that true? So are we not a falling system? Are we not a falling country? Are we not falling? Yes. We are falling because we left somebody behind. We can't leave anybody behind. We are falling because somebody didn't matter to us. We are falling. We are falling. Everybody is important in this march. Don't forget about the black lives. What does the Black Lives Matter statement mean? It means we matter too. Black Lives Matter too. We dropped the two and sell the statement to you so that you'll understand black lives matter. We're not saying we're the only one that matter. That ain't never been said. We just want you to know we matter too. So help us pick up the pieces of this fallen country and make a difference in the world around you. And we could change this world one by one by just a simple thing of putting the pieces back together. Are you with me? Yeah. Let's do it. Over there, the Black Lives Matter 
Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. And if you haven't filled out one of these forms for the movement, you can fill one out over here. Please fill one out. Please. I can make a donation too.